Hello, everybody. Hey, it's Talk CDL, and I am kind of beside myself today. I am actually all alone. Miss Ruthann is sick in bed, and she looked like crap. Um, I know you guys are going to miss her today. I know she's the sunlight, the shining little light of the show, but um, hopefully I'll put on a decent podcast for you guys, and uh, we'll get through this together. I do have a a couple of things that I'd like to talk about today, and really the one of the things that I want to talk about today that we'll get to here a little bit later on in the show, and that is trucking companies, you have no right to withhold truck drivers' money, okay? They're earned money, the money they've actually, if they've completed miles, and according to labor relations, you don't even have the right to keep their earned bonuses. This is the truth. Look it up. You have no right to hold their last paycheck and, and take money out of it. And you have no right, okay, you have no right to even withhold any bonuses earned. And we're going to get to that here a little bit later. I want to talk about a pileup that happened uh, this past week. And I also want to talk about the dangers of... Jumping out of a moving vehicle, which happened also this week. Some people think that that's the right thing to do. But before we get to that, I want to talk to you about one thing. Um, Being sick on the road. Being sick on the road is not fun. And I want to talk to you about what, and, and I mean this sincerely, like a lot of people really don't get the actual concept of what it's like to be a trucker. That's sick on the road. I mean, and can't really operate his truck. There's a lot of things that people never really take in consideration. We want to talk about that. But first, I'd like to just mention a couple of our sponsors today. We're brought to you by National Carriers. National Carriers is right out of Irving, Texas. They have beautiful Kenworth T6As, and they're hiring students and experienced drivers. Call them today at 888 888- 3117076 the camera's set up in my way today i can't really see the board like i should um call call national carries today if you're looking for a job also another trucking company that is a sponsor of the show carter lumber and they're all about getting drivers home every day and they're hiring class a and class b drivers and they are located all over from the uh, uh east of the mississippi this, this company has over 160 locations, and if you go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and fill out their little short form, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL, and they will give you either a class A or a class B home every day local job if you're looking to get off the road. Call them today, and if you call them, let them know talk CDL sent you over there so that they know you heard about it through talk CDL. We're also brought to you by LoadSmart. LoadSmart, uh, which it owns Camion, Camion's break-even calculator, and, and drivers and, and small companies and large companies are downloading this free download. We get emails all the time about it, and it, re- it really helps you utilize um, everything that you have to defeat the, these crazy, crazy high prices that dr- uh, drivers are going through, low rates high fuel, all this stuff. If you download the the break-even calculator, it will really help you maximize your bottom line in such a horrible industry. And that that is uh, the address for that. I'm sorry. I'm so lost without Ruth Ann. The address for that is Camion, that's K-A-M-I-O-N dot I-O forward slash talk C-D-L. That's K-A-M-I-O-N dot I O forward slash talk CDL. And last but not least, DriveWise. DriveWise is such an awesome company. And again, it's an, another one of those companies. We get tons of emails telling us. Um, in fact, a, a company in Illinois emailed us not long ago, said, Hey, we have 60 trucks and we saved a ton of money by switching over to um, DriveWise. And that's spelled D R I V E W Y Z E. If you want to bypass the scales today, Anybody from one truck to a thousand trucks can download this or 10 million trucks. If you can all download this app and you go to drivewise.com and that's D R I V E W Y Z E 
com and just download the free download. Put that up on your phone and start bypassing the scales today. Again, we are here today. Just want to remind everybody just tuned in. We are here today and we are without Miss Ruth Ann, which sucks. I'll be honest with you. She's sick. She's, she's, in fact, Ruth Ann, I don't know if she got out of bed probably but to go to the bathroom and she is literally still there. I was cooking for her and for Rebecca, our daughter. They're both sick in bed. And um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. You know, one of the things that I'd like to talk to you about is what truckers are up against. What, what, is, what is really a truck driver up against when he or she is sick on the road? And, you know, I wrote a few things down, but I'd, I'd really like to reach out to a lot of people Trucking companies, truck drivers, trucking families, you don't realize what a truck driver goes through. I'm going to name one of the things that I was thinking about this morning, well, how crazy this is. But, you know, as little Miss Ruth Ann was sick um, the last day and a half, I waited on her, you know? And when I'm sick and I'm in bed, she waits on me. And she probably does a much better job than... I do of waiting on her, but you know, you cook for somebody, you run for medicine, you do all kinds. Of, in fact, yes, yesterday I said, listen, I'm going to go get you a COVID test and just let's check to see if it's COVID. No, don't do that. That's not worth the money. That was Ruth Ann, you know, whining. I don't, don't spend the money on COVID tests. What does it matter? They can't treat me. But that was, you know, the whininess that, 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 you know, a, a, a sick person's allowed to do. And what I'm getting at is when you're a truck driver and you're on the road, you have nobody to wait on you, man. You know, Sit, think about that for a second. You know, I'm going to tell you a story. And I think I've told this a few years ago. One time I, I was on the road and I came home and I had a toothache, literally a toothache. And Ruth Ann gave me some Tylenol 3, which this was when I was a young, dumb trucker, didn't know it was a narcotic. And so I get on the road, I take one of these Tylenol 3s, I'm in West Virginia, and I'm sick. I'm now sick. I got a toothache. And I'm literally sweating. And I guess I'm probably loopy from this narcotic. And I'm at a truck stop. And I called her and I said, hey, what in the world is in, in that pill? Ever since I've taken it, I feel a little, you know, weird. And, uh, and she told me. And I said, oh, crap. I said, man, I, I, can't, I can't drive a truck with that in me. Plus, I'm sick. Plus, this tooth is killing me. I mean, honestly and truly, I, I cannot do this. This is driving me nuts. And, you know, I got off the phone with her. Well, and at the time it was a payphone. Walk back out to the truck, lay down for a little bit, and then walk back in. And you know, contemplating, you know, at the time I'm like, oh, okay, I got to tell my dispatcher that I'm too sick to move on, and I hope he doesn't get mad and blah blah blah. And so I called the dispatcher and I said, hey, listen, I am sick as a dog. And by the way, I don't even know where that term ever even came from. I wish Ruth Ann was here. I'd have her Google it. How the hell can a person be as sick as a dog? And, and how sick does a dog get? I mean, I've never seen a dog with a fever coughing with the flu, and I've owned many dogs. Kind of a weird saying, isn't it? But anyway, so I called my dispatcher, and I told him I was sick as a dog. I said, listen, man, there is no way. And you see, you got to understand, at that time, I knew, even though I was a young trucker, and this was way, way, way back in the day, when you can get away with a lot of stuff. But I knew if something happened to me on the road at the time, because I had that narcotic in me, I was screwed. And I did not want to screw up. You know, one of the only things that I was good at, and that was driving a truck. So I told the dispatcher, I said, listen, I am not, I'm not starting this truck up. I am sick. My tooth is killing me. I don't know what to do. I said, I am going to go to bed and I will call you tomorrow. And I was under a load. I was under load headed to, I was actually headed to Chesterfield, or no, Petersburg, Virginia, I believe, it was a company, I, my, my very first over-the-road company was called 
great coastal later on down the road, selling on bought the mountain and of course selling on went out of business. But anyways, I was on my way to, um, great coastals terminal, uh, with a load. And I told them, listen, I am absolutely not moving today. I am going to be in my bed sleeping. I don't care what you want to do, but I'm, I'm dead tired. And he believed me. He actually seemed like he believed me. But here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen, trucking companies and everybody out there. One of the biggest problems today with truck drivers telling a company they have something wrong is the companies tend to not believe a lot of drivers these days. And, and in defense, in defense of the trucking companies, there's a lot of drivers that have lied to them. So, you know, that old story about the boy who cried wolf, he cried wolf like 5 billion times. And the townspeople kept running and going, where's the wolf? We're going to save you, kid. And then finally, um, after they, he yelled wolf too many times, they started, you know, to be doubtful. And then when the wolf really showed up, the boy cried wolf and nobody showed up. So really, the, the bottom line is there's a lot of drivers. There's some bad apples that have ruined it for a lot of drivers. And there's drivers. I mean, we're in the flu season, you know, right now. I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, November 5th, I'm actually doing this podcast the day before the airing of it. And I'm getting reports all over the place. You know, Florida, of course, is one of those states where if you look on the COVID map, we are like in the dark red compared to the rest of the country right now and flus and everything because 99% of these billion snowbirds that flock to Florida to vacation here and get away from the winter up there, bring their sickness here. And that's why Florida in the wintertime always spikes with all kinds of sicknesses. So if you get a load to Florida, be careful going in truck stops and being around people. Um, you may catch the flu or COVID. Um, Chicago area, Minneapolis area right now, if, if you look on the maps, those are really high alert areas for flus. I got a lot of people I work with in different areas over the country, and people in Minneapolis and Illinois are just dead sick right now. So, you know, this is the problem. You know, going back to what I mentioned, when a truck driver says, Hey, dispatcher, I don't feel good. I'm going to try to lay down. First off, there's a good chance the dispatcher isn't going to believe the driver. And that sucks because of all the BS that has gone on in this industry. But you, if you're really legitimately sick, you better convince him. Because the one thing you don't, believe it or not, you can fall asleep at the wheel if you're sick. You can get distracted. Being sick is almost like being drunk sometimes. And it's the truth. When you're, when you're dead ass tired like that, you're the captain of the ship. You have to be adamant about, I am sick. I am pulling over. You know, um, I'll send you, I'll, I'll try to get to a doctor. And that's the other thing. You're usually at a truck stop, so now you got to try to get to a doctor. Now, I guess getting to a doctor isn't that hard. You know, on the road, now you can call an Uber and get to a doctor's office and go maybe get a shot of penicillin or whatever the heck you need. Maybe get some antibiotics in you and get diagnosed what you have. But I got to tell you, the part of not having anybody to wait on you, honestly, that sucks. I feel for my brothers and my sisters out there um, in trucking land. You know, I know what it's like to be laying at a truck stop for like, I think it was like Almost two days I laid there and just, first off, I wanted to, that, that narcotic out of me is really what I was really concerned about. But, and I, the toothache, you know, when you have a toothache, to me, the two worst pains in the world are earaches and toothaches. If you give me an earache or a toothache, I cannot function. It's horrible. And so when you're out on the road and you have these things happen to you, I understand. But unfortunately, your dispatcher and your managers might not understand. So drivers, don't take offense if the company doesn't believe you. It's not that they don't believe you. They're just so used to being lied to by a lot of other drivers. So the best thing you can do is maybe even make a doctor's appointment. Call from a truck stop at the local clinic or doctor 
and tell the trucking company, look, I have an appointment with the doctor. I got an Uber coming to get me and then get a receipt at the doctor's office and snapshot it with the today's date and the name of the doctor that's in that area. And guess what? Problem solved. Now, should you have to prove it? Yeah, I, I think we all have to at this point, because like I said, there's a lot of BS in the industry where truck drivers have lied. And there's a lot of really good truck drivers that get screwed because of the lying ones. So if you can do that, that would definitely at least confirm with your dispatch and your company, hey, this guy is cool. And I'll tell you really, especially if you're a new driver for a company, if you've been with the company one or two months, three months, and you know, you all of a sudden get sick, I would tell you, you probably are the guy definitely should prove it more than the driver that's actually been with the company a couple of years because they probably know the guy. Okay, he's been running for us. He's never sick. This guy, is, we know he's not lying. He probably doesn't have to prove it. Now, trucking companies, you also try to be light on these guys because I'm telling you, literally, um, this is flu season. And it's I'm seeing it all over the place. People are getting sick. And I would tell you drivers, I would tell you drivers and everybody, you're out on the road. You know, I'm not telling you to go in and wear masks and, and you know, panic like they did on, on COVID. The COVID thing, in fact, I was a guy not wearing masks, okay? But at the same time, you know, the flu is very catchy. You go into a truck stop, man, wash your dang hands. You touch the bathroom. I don't even like touching the bathroom door. I kind of push it open with my foot if I can. And if somebody's walking in, I'll try to <laughs> it, go in or out when they open up the door <laughs> so I don't have to touch the door. But the bottom line is, you know, make sure you carry some alcohol soap and wash your hands when you get out to your truck and, you know, stay, st keep your distance from people at this time of the year. Not that you should be afraid, but, you know, if you get sick, then you're down. If you're down, then the load doesn't get delivered. You don't get paid and you are sick. Honestly, I don't know of many companies, trucking companies that offer sick days. Um, that may be something to inquire about with your, your company. But I just wanted to do a little segment on that, you know, and talk to you guys about, you know, what it's like to be sick on the, on the road, finding a doctor, finding a place to pull over, convincing somebody that, hey, I really am sick. And then, of course, not having mama or somebody to, you know, bring you chicken soup. What, a, what an awesome thing it is to get chicken soup when you're sick. You know, and I understand um, you're out on the road and uh, it sucks. It just truly sucks. So do yourself a favor and make sure you carry, you know, certain things with you. Wash your hands, carry medicine if you can, cough medicine or something that's not alcohol related that you can't get in trouble with if you need to push on. And, you know, trucking companies, if the driver tells you sick and you ask him, hey, can you at least get the load delivered? Drivers, if you can safely deliver the load, I would. I really would. Um, but if you feel that you're unsafe to operate that truck, then the answer is you must shut down. If you're unsafe to operate that truck, your life, somebody else's life, the truck, the trucking company, everybody is better off if it's unsafe. I'm going to move on now to the, the next little portion of this podcast. I don't have Ruth Ann to go moving on. And by the way, we're probably not going to get the word of the day. Okay. Maybe flu. <laughs> Maybe we should use the word flu for the word of the day. Um, so next thing I, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about is this. There was a massive pileup in Denver recently, this week. And last week there was a couple pileups. So we, we all know, and this is going to be a short little segment right here. It's starting again. Um, if you go to the, if you go to CDL life, they're the ones that reported it and you can read the entire, um, version of, of this. Um, they talk about how winter weather was reported in the area and they have pictures on their page and it is insane what this pileup looks like. I mean, it is, it looks like, it literally looks like you're flying over a junkyard. <laughs> That's how crazy it looks. But look, here's what I want to talk to you about. Okay. Slow down. Keep your, keep your sheer distance. And I mean it, you're better off right now when it's, when weather hits is to get under the speed limit and just take your time. And if it's really slick, get to a truck stop, pull off the road. 
okay, the last thing you want to do is be driving in an area that you honestly and truly don't feel safe doing. Now, I will tell you this, honestly, and, and you know we preach the CB radio. And I know there's a lot of drivers that go, well, I've been driving 20 years, man, and I've never had an accident. I don't use my CB. Well, you know what? You were blessed, man. You were blessed. And guess what else? You're lucky, okay? All right? You're one of the two, truly, because there are so many drivers out there that didn't use their CB that regret it because they came around a turn and maybe there was black ice that they could have known a mile back. Hey, slow it down. You have no many, t- you, you guys can't fathom how many people have been saved by that CB. Okay. Hey, there's black ice. Up. I'll never forget the time I was heading up to Wilkes-Barre. And when you get into Pennsylvania and everybody knows what I-81 is like. I'll bet you every truck driver that is listening to me right now has been on Interstate 81. Unless you're some West Coast regional driver that's new out there. But if you've been on 81 in Pennsylvania, when you come into PA it, from Maryland, it's flat. Flat lands. When you're getting up, when you go about 50 miles and you're up into, into Harrisburg, okay, 40, 50 mile marker in that area, it's flat. Okay, it's flat. Then all of a sudden you get up to where the 8178 split is. Okay. 78 heads over to Jersey and New York City. 81 heads north up to Hazleton, up to Wilkesbury, Scranton. And then obviously all the way up, you can go all the way up to Binghamton, New York, or Watertown, New York. You could just go all the way up. Okay. Also, you can get on 84 and you can go east over to Connecticut and Mass and all our good stuff and get on 90. Um, but here's the thing. Okay, once you get above that 8178 split, okay, weather changes in a blink of an eye. And I'm talking about not any Google, not any news. They forecast it, all right? But that weather changes cr- abruptly. It's disgusting. And the one time I was headed up to Wilkes-Barre, it was one of my runs. I used to run the East Coast. I used to run, I used, this is when I was running for a company called FFE, okay? Running for an owner-operator. I was with them for many years. It was a great job. And I would pick up in Chicago, all LTL. I'd have, you know, 10, 20, 30 stops on the trailer. And I'd come over to Pennsylvania, and I'd run Allentown, Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Hazleton. I'd run all over, the, all over Pennsylvania, hand-unloading my trailer, okay? And I had... Uh, a couple skids that was going to um, Scranton. Really, I was actually Scranton. And on the CB, all right, I was I was w- really listening because guess what? I had just come from that lower level Harrisburg area where it's always warmer. And as I'm getting up to Frackville, okay, up above on top of the mountain there, I started getting reports, okay, And one guy pointed out, he said, hey, temperature's dropping fast. And I noticed I used to have a meat thermometer and we would, in the reefer business back in the day, we would stick the meat thermometer through our wing window, through the little rubber thing, and it would just stay outside and it would literally tell us when it got to 32. And I'll never forget that day, it was 33 degrees as I was coming up to Frackville and I knew it wasn't going to be long and it was misty. Okay, it was misty out. And all of a sudden, I started going, I got up above Hazleton, and I started climbing the hill, and somebody said, back it down, they're sliding all over the place. And I looked down at my meat thermometer, and it was like 31 degrees, 31, 32 degrees. And I knew right away, that road that was wet. And here's the other all tell driver. There's the other all tell thing that maybe you new drivers haven't been told yet about. When you look at the truck in front of you or the car in front of you, watch their tires. Watch for the mist coming off. If they don't have mist coming off, meaning it's wet, that's when the road's frozen. Be really, really cautious when you look at the vehicle in front of you and it's supposed to be wet roads and and precipitation was coming down. And all of a sudden, you don't see mist coming off them tires. You need to back it down. And at that point, probably you need to get to a safe place because until the road gets packed with snow, packed snow is easy to drive on. We all know that. Okay. But when you have mist and 31, 32 degrees, 
drivers. That's very dangerous. It becomes it becomes an ice skating rink, and there was vehicles going all over the place. I was already slowed down. There was other truckers with us. We were already slowed down. And guess what? We avoided the craziness. All right. There was people off the road. There was people in the ditch, and we all had CBs. And there was no pileup that day. Drivers, you couldn't believe how many interstates I crossed on the snow belt running from Chicago to Pennsylvania all the way across 80. That was my route. And we all know what the snow belt is like. I couldn't tell you how many times I was in Ohio or Indiana and they shut the road down to doubles and to big RVs because of the wind and the ice. Okay. But you wouldn't know this at the time if you didn't have a CB going. All right. A lot of times. And so here we are back in the day and the communication between driver brother and driver brother was awesome. So I'm telling you, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, get a CB or risk, risk being in a wreck. And you drivers that have been risking it for years, trust me, okay, arrogance and pride will get you in an accident, okay? Do yourself a favor, get a, a CB. You don't even have to get on it and talk. You turn your squelch back, or up rather, and your gain, or your gain up and your squelch back, okay? That way you can hear a mile or two ahead. All right. And if there's a bad report, somebody's going to be on there saying, hey, guys, there's a wreck up ahead. There's a wreck up ahead. I couldn't tell you how many drivers have written into us and have told us, talk CDL. I wish I would have listened to you guys or talk CDL. I, I heard your podcast about CBs. And unfortunately, I was one of those guys that didn't have a CB turned on or didn't have my CB. And I wiped out. Okay, I'm not going to harp like some mother hen anymore at this point. I'm just telling you guys, get the CB, lessen your odds of getting into a wreck. I'm telling you. And if you're a trucking company, and I know there's one or two companies that prohibit CBs in the truck, I want to tell you something. You guys have the brain of a tomato, all right? If you're a trucking company that doesn't allow your drivers to have a CB, you have the brains of a tomato, okay? A CB is not a distraction like a cell phone. They don't have to look at it. Okay, that's the difference. A CB is something you grab the handle, you pull it to your face, and your face is still watching the road. You talk to the driver and you keep going. That's a CB radio, all right? Big difference between your cell phone distraction and a CB radio. That's why the DOT has never outlawed CBs. So if you're a trucking company that does not allow drivers to have CBs in your truck, you have the brains of a tomato, and you're probably going to be one of those companies that has a giant lawsuit if you haven't already someday. I'm moving on, as Ruth Ann would probably say, moving on. Real quick, I just want to talk to you about one thing. Um, another little segment I... I had planned, I'm going to, I mentioned it in the beginning, jumping out of your truck. Now, why do you say this, Troy? There was a report on one of the sites that I read. Um, a driver had um, started sliding into a car that was stopped in the road. I guess they hit the car, and then it sounds like they were headed towards an embankment, which was going to go downhill about 60 feet. Okay, now listen to this. They jumped out, and praise God, they were both not injured, I guess. They weren't killed. And the truck went down over the bank 60 feet and crashed. All right. Now, guys, I got to tell you, statistics go against jumping out of your vehicle. I had this friend. I was at a, a club. I was about 21. This was before I, I actually, I, I might have already knew Ruth Ann. Okay. I was probably not 21. I was probably about 24. And that's when I had met Ruth Ann. And uh, this guy, his name was, um, I won't even say his name. Uh, a, f a friend of ours from Pottsville, Pennsylvania at the time, his dad owned this gigantic construction company. I'm serious. And uh, I was in, in the uh, club shooting pool with him and he kind of was upset. He had a tear in his eye. A guy that he worked with was killed that day. And here was the deal. Guy was in, I don't, I think the guy was either in a, a, uh, a backhoe or one of those uke trucks, the ones with the gigantic tires. He was in one of those vehicles. And I guess he was on a dirt mound or he was sideways and the vehicle started to roll. And he decided to jump out to try to, you know, obviously in his mind, he thought he's saving himself. 
So he in turn jumps out. And while jumping out, he gets caught and crushed by the vehicle. And this friend of mine was, you know, the, I'll never forget the words he said to me. He said, you know, Troy, <clears throat> excuse me. He said, you know, Troy, the rule of thumb, the rule of thumb has always been never jump out of a vehicle. Never. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay. There are times where you may have to jump out. You know, maybe you're going, maybe you're going over a bridge. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's, uh, you know, a thousand feet down. You probably aren't going to survive that. You do have to use your best judgment. But in most cases, jumping out of a moving vehicle, okay, we had a report of a, 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 a man and wife. And this was years ago. You could probably go back and hear it on Talk CDL, you know, when we um, were back with um, Blog Talk Radio and those guys. Okay, if you go back to probably, I mean, this was 2000, I think, 15 when we started doing this seven years ago. And it was probably 2016. It was probably in our first or second year. I remember reporting a driver and his wife got into this big fight on the road. Well, they weren't going fast, maybe 30 miles an hour. They were on a uh, probably a highway or a, 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 you know, a two-lane road or whatever the case was. And... They got into this fight and she gets pissed off and she decides to go, F you, I'm out of here. Stop the truck. And of course, he's like, you know, not wanting to stop and have his old lady, wife, girlfriend, whatever she was at the time, get out and be hitchhiking or walking or, you know, be in danger. He doesn't want to be responsible for leaving her out because it wasn't in an area where it was like in a city. He was out in the country. And so he wouldn't stop. She decides to jump out. Well, when she jumps out. Uh, the vacuum of the truck or whatever happened sucked her under and the, and the tandems ran her over. Okay. I can't, I'll be honest with you. I cannot remember if she was killed. I think she was, but you guys can go back. This is probably five, six years ago and research that segment on jumping out of a vehicle at the time. And she, she just figured, you know, screw you. We're not going that fast. I'll just dive, tuck, and roll, blah, blah, blah. We see it in the movies all the time. Well, a lot of things can happen. You know, the door can catch your coat, your shirt. You know, you can get caught on something, your footwear. You could, you could slip instead of jumping and go straight down. And a lot of times, okay, a lot of times it doesn't go your way to where you survive. So I would tell you to really be cautious on jumping out of a vehicle. Um, would I jump out of a vehicle getting ready to go down an embankment? I don't know if I would. I, I'll be honest with you. I would probably have to make that assessment at the time. And you only have maybe, what, a second to go, I'm out or I'm in. But I'll tell you, look at this. Let's say you're headed towards guardrails and you decide to jump out. You will be killed if you hit one of those guardrails with your head. Okay, it will rip your head off. It will cut you up. It will rip you in half. If you go under the truck, 80,000 pounds will kill you. So, you know, there's a lot of chance you take when you jump out of an actual vehicle. So use caution when you do that. And if you do decide to do that, jump as far away out as you can Okay, and try to tuck and roll, but I would still advise staying in the vehicle and riding it out. Okay, all right. So I want to move on to um, what I wanted to talk about in the beginning. Um, I've, I've talked to a lot of drivers, okay, that have quit trucking companies. And, and don't get me wrong, some drivers really honestly and truly are bad when it comes to the way they quit a trucking company. Okay, but here's the deal. The labor relations states that no trucking company has the right to keep, no earned money can be kept. Okay, no earned money. And I'll tell you something, we've talked about this before. I don't, I don't believe in a trucking company that is a, a, uh, a trucking company that has company drivers that charges, or not charge, but that takes out an escrow. Okay. Um, if you're going, I, and I'll tell you this before I get started drivers, if you're going to a new job as a company driver, I would ask the trucking company outright, is there an escrow for company drivers? Cause some of them do put that in there because what they want to do is they want to take out like 50 or a hundred dollars a week. 
And in case you abandon the truck, they're going to use that money to recoup the truck. And personally, I think, personally, I think, honestly, they should be allowed to do that. But I question an escrow, and I don't think that that's legal for a company driver. I really don't. Um, but going back to this, excuse me, drinking coffee earlier. Um, going back to this, when a driver quits a company, labor relations states that Every driver, or actually, not just driver, every employee that's a company employee has to be paid their wages when they quit and all earned bonuses. See, a lot of people don't realize that. You, the, if it's a bonus you earned, like, for example, let's say you work for a trucking company and they give you, let's just say they give you five cents a mile extra for the month if you hit 10,000 miles. Okay. Well, guess what? You literally um, should be paid. Let's say you did 10,000 miles for that month. You should get $500 if you quit that month in an additional check. Now I want to read to you, listen to this. The reason, the entire reason that I, I uh, have this segment about this earned money Okay, being paid to a truck driver. And guys, this is one of the reasons why drivers, you know, try to get one over on you sometimes because they realize that there's a lot of companies that do screw the driver. It's not just, listen, it's not just the driver's fault. A lot of trucking companies bring this on themselves. So there's a, an article. If you guys go over to CDL Life, I pulled this up this morning and uh, just read it. It's called Driver Shoots Boss After Disputes Over Theft Payment. And let me just give you the gist of what happened. A truck driver... His, his last name is Gordon. Um, let's see. His name is David Gordon Sr. And he ended up shooting Darius, D-A-R-U-I-S-Z, Swader, S-W-I-A-D-E-R, um, over money. Okay. Um, really, the bottom line is, and I, you can read the entire story of what happened. And it gives a description of how um, uh, how it happened. But here's the reasoning. After they sorted through everything, it said, in Gordon's interview with police, he told officers that Swader had accused him of damaging a semi-truck and stealing a GPS prior to their encounter. The argument in the parking lot was over the accusations and the paycheck. He told police he shot Swader because he was fearful of his safety. And of course, the police didn't believe that. But look, drivers and companies, you got to realize one thing. Money, okay, is not something to play with. This is why I started out telling you guys, you don't have the right to keep the truck driver's money. And quite frankly, this does happen. It happens more than you think it does. I'll never forget, and I'm going to tell you, um, when companies hold back money, it could be deadly. I was working for FFE at the time as a driver, and I was on my way back to Pennsylvania and I'll never forget, there was a company called TRL. And I know a lot of you drivers remember TRL. Okay. Um, I forget who bought them out. But they were a, actually about five, 600 trucks. They were in Pittston, Pennsylvania. And they were a reefer carrier. And they did a, lot of, they did a lot of California, a lot of West Coast runs. And at the time, there was a driver. He, I'll never forget this. He was 48. You guys can find the article. He was 48. And his dispatcher was 48. And here's what happened. I'm going to give you the gist of this. Um, he was in California and I guess he was laying over or something and the dispatcher told him to get a hotel and he, and he said, he told him that they would pay for it. So he kept the receipt and the following week he was in California. Um, he got his check and the hotel receipt wasn't in there. Well, apparently this driver and this dispatcher had had words over, this guy had been with them for quite a while and they did not get along. So apparently this truck driver, right? Um, got so pissed off. It's like, you know what? I'm sick and tired of you guys burning me or whatever the case was. Okay. He gets in his truck in California, drives all the way to Pittston. Pittston is like right above um, Scranton or below it. I used to deliver there. It's right in that Scranton area, uh, Wilkes-Barre area. He drives all the way back to TRL. And in fact, I've actually dropped off, I think, a skid for P TRL one time when I was with FFE. I went into their terminal and they actually had, at the time, you know, guards, you had to go in and out. And I don't know if it was probably a result of this. But anyways, this driver drives all the way back to Pittston. He literally gets, and he had his wife with him, by the way. 
gets out of his truck, leaves his wife in the truck, goes into TRL's office, walks in, and he literally opens up, I guess, his shirt and pulls out a thirty-eight. And, unlo- and, and, and he actually goes up to the dispatcher. The dispatcher looks at him. I guess he didn't realize he had a gun. He looks at the driver and goes, look, I don't have time for you. Or says something cocky to the driver, which was probably the, the trigger. Okay. All right. And guess what? The driver emptied his gun into the dispatcher in front of the entire dispatch office. You can look it up. It's, you can find old articles on this. And I'm sure I would love to interview somebody. If you're listening to me, I would love to interview you if you were there that day. You know, I would love to, to talk to you about that and, and, and the problems that the industry faces with that incident. So if you are part of the old TRL team, call us or send, send, send me an email at Troy at TalkCDL.com or Ruth Ann at TalkCDL.com. But anyways, going back to this, he empties the gun and then he supposedly looked for two other people. I guess he realized, hey, man, I might as well just clean house here. Um, he, he uh, I guess, couldn't find the other two people and uh, I guess literally said, I'll be in my truck. He went out, didn't even tell his wife. He waited for the police to come, gets out of his truck, walks up to the police. And, and this is in the report. You can read it. He says to the police, please don't tell my wife. <laughs> I mean, this is how crazy this guy went after a while. So here's my point. Now, this guy, believe it or not, is still in prison today um, in Pennsylvania over this. And he's doing life. And I think they actually transferred him to a, a, a like a, I don't want to say a nut ward, but, you know, a facility for men- mentally insane or something. Here's the bottom line. Companies, you don't know who the driver is. You don't. And when you, you a driver quits, you think, oh, this driver abandoned my truck. You know what? We're going to keep his last paycheck and all this other crap. I'm going to tell you something. You're better off paying him. You're better off taking the loss. You know, you're really better off in orientation is really putting it across these guys. Listen, guys, I will put it in writing. If you bring my truck back, we promise you a plane ride home. We will not keep your last paycheck and we promise you a ride home. Give the driver something in writing. So he start, they start bringing your truck back to you because I know abandonments are real high right now in the industry. I've been talking to a lot of companies and a lot of these companies, these drivers and the drivers that I talk to, every one of them are saying, yeah, they're going to keep my last paycheck. Yeah, this company owes me $2,500. Yeah, this company owes me $3,000 thousand dollars yeah and and then just like on this incident where this guy gordon shot um this this trucking company boss guess what a lot of companies they make stuff up too oh yeah there was damage to the truck oh yeah um we're, we're billing you for this oh yeah we're billing you for that guys seriously you might get away with it for the rest of your trucking career blaming a truck driver and keeping their extra money that they actually earned but Is it worth it if they walk into your company and pull out a gun and put a bullet between your eyes? It's not worth it. Drivers, I'm speaking to you now. It's not worth killing somebody over. When you sit in prison for the rest of your life and you say, yeah, it was all over 500 bucks or 2000 bucks they owed me. It's not going to be worth it for you either. You're going to be in a six-by-six six cage the rest of your life like an animal. Never going to be able to have sex with your wife again. Never going to be able to hug your family again. Never going to be able to sit down and, and eat Thanksgiving dinner again with your family. And, and I promise you, the, those days come, you will always regret. And regret is the worst thing you can ever have. So shootings and, and even threatening to shoot somebody, drivers. You know, if you read this article on CDL Life, go to it and read it. He actually had threatened to shoot the guy. And that's terroristic threats. You can go to prison for that, too. So, you know, the bottom line is drivers keep a calm head and choose your companies wisely. If they have an escrow, don't go there. I wouldn't. I would not work for a company that takes money out of my paycheck. I've earned that co- that money, Mr. Trucking Company. I'm coming to work and deliver loads so you can go ahead and ki- put your kids through college and drive your freaking Ferraris or whatever you buy, okay, as trucking company owners, all right? If you're going to take my earned money, okay, that's bullshit, all right? So, drivers, I wouldn't work for that company. Okay, and then also do your research. If a comp- if you see a lot of researching where drivers are saying, "Yeah, they kept my money. They kept my money. They kept my money. They kept my money." You can find those those reviews. If you have a trucking company that's keep that's kept a lot of our brothers' money, don't go work for them either. I'm just telling you guys, it's not worth killing somebody, shooting somebody, or threatening somebody. Drivers, don't do it. 
okay? And trucking companies, don't take for granted that a driver is afraid to go to prison. <laughs> there are drivers that are not afraid to go to prison, okay? There is not a lot of, there, well, there's a lot of drivers that are afraid to go to prison. They're the smart ones. But guys, some, seriously, you don't know who's in your orientation class, okay? There, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a quick story. This is the truth. Uh, um, a trucking company that was in Alabama, I'm going to end the podcast with this. A trucking company that was in Alabama, and this was a guy that worked there, okay? I'll give you his first name. is Mike. Very credible guy. He said, I'll never forget this. He said, I was um, with a driver or with a driver manager at the time. And he said, they were having problems with this one driver, okay? He had messed up a couple times and they, they gave him a load to come back to the terminal, and the driver wasn't stupid. He knew he was going to be fired. Okay. And I forget what the incident was. Okay. But the driver knew, well, they're not going to give me a load back to the terminal and um, probably f not fire me. You know, a, a warning is probably not going to happen. They're probably going to fire me. And this was one of those drivers. You just don't know who you're hiring, guys. And here's what happened. I'm going to give you this in the quick story. The driver picks up the phone and calls his DM, and he says this to the driver. He says, driver, or, or, or DM, this is driver blah, blah. I don't even, I don't remember the guy's name. Harold, let's say the guy's name was Harold. He says, this is Harold blah, blah. He said, I know I messed up the other day, and I see you guys gave me a load back to the terminal. He said, I need you to put me through to the top guy in the company. And I need you to do it now. So he gets the president of the company. Now, guys and gals, I'm going to tell you, this is a company that went out of business, but they were bought out by a large company. And they had literally like almost 2,000 trucks at one time. They had green trucks, if you want to know what they look like, cab overs. So the president of this company gets on the phone and he says, he addresses the guy. Never actually met the guy. He says, I, here's who I am. My name is this. He says, and I know I messed up and your, your um, operations has given me a load back to the terminal and I, I'm pretty sure you're going to fire me. He says, but here's the way it's going to go. And, and, and Mike told me, this guy said this without his heartbeat going up. Wasn't cursing, wasn't angry. He said it in a very calm manner. Let's, let's say the president's name was Dave. He said, Dave, here's how it's going to go. First, before I even arrive, you're going to order me a rental car paid for. You're going to have my last check waiting for me. I know it's a week, you know, I know it's a week in the hole, but you're going to have all my money waiting for me. He said, and then you're not going to walk me out the door and embarrass me in front of people. You're not going to make a scene. You're not going to take me in the office and reprimand me. He says, because if you do, he said, I'm going to find your house. And I will rape your wife. And I will cut your kids' throats. And I will kill everybody I can. He said, now listen. He said, now listen. I know you probably think that that was just a threat. He said, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the number of my old manager. His name is Mike at my last company. He said, I want you to, before you call the police on me, he said, I want you to pick up the phone and I want you to call Mike and I want you to ask him about Harold blah, blah. He said, I want you to tell him what I said to you. He said, and I want you to then call me back with your answer. And he hung up and the president was very shaken and he literally decided to pick up the phone and call Mike at the other trucking company. 
And he told Mike what had just happened and who the guy was. And Mike's words were this. He said, whatever he said, believe him. He said, whatever he said he'll do, believe him. He said, obviously, you didn't do a criminal background on this guy. He said, believe him. He said, he will do what he says. Now, obviously, the guy might have never murdered before, but apparently this guy was bad trouble news. And so they did it. They got him a rental. They gave him his pay. They didn't escort him off the property, and they just left him go. And they never, ever bothered the guy again. Now, I'm telling you, this is literal stuff that can happen when you piss off the wrong guy. And I understand trucking companies get screwed by drivers. I get that, okay? But is it really worth the risk in that one guy you don't know who is in your fleet? That one guy that's in your fleet that will literally do something that will change the entire lives of your entire trucking company in a bad way forever. Is it really worth it? It's not worth it. Okay, start giving the guy an, a, a guarantee. Try to help yourself out. Make it better. Give him a guarantee that, you know what, if you quit, don't abandon my truck. I promise you, I will get you a plane right here. I'm going to give it in writing. I'm signing it as the trucking company. You have this now in writing that every penny that you've earned, you'll get. And you, it will not be delayed. And you will get an airplane ticket to whatever destination, even another trucking company. I'll put it in writing. Guys. It's trucking companies, listen, it's cheaper than having to pick up an abandoned truck and it's safer than pissing off the wrong guy. You just don't know. You don't, you don't know if that truck driver that you just pissed off just found his wife in bed with somebody and doesn't care what he does. You don't know. You don't know if he just lost somebody. You just don't know. And look, I'm not telling anybody to, to negotiate with terrorists. I'm really not. But I'm telling you at the same time, it isn't worth it. If you just instill a, a, a rule in the beginning, in the orientation, if you instill this rule that we will not keep anything of your money, you, you kind of are taking away this guy ever having to threaten you or this guy abandoning your truck or this guy doing something stupid. You're actually eliminating the, the having to negotiate with a terrorist by instilling this new law into your company. I hope this helps you, trucking companies. And that story is very true that I just told you. It is a very, very true story of what this guy said he would do. And that's a very true story about what the trucking company did in return. Drivers, investigate the company you're going to. Again, I'll say this to you, okay? Investigate the company you're going to. If, they, if they're known for keeping people's money, don't go there. If there's a lot of people abandoning trucks on that company, I wouldn't go there. It tells you the, the company mustn't be that great to begin with if they have abandonments all the time. Okay, investigate it. Do the right thing. Companies do the right thing. Drivers do the right thing. I wish Ruth Ann was here, okay, and she would give you the word of the day. How about the word of the day? How about I give you the word of the day? Okay, something that the trucking company really needs. How about the word of the day being peace? Okay, we always say peace before we leave. Okay, but think about that for a second. Peace. Seek, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not trying to shove Bible scripture down anybody's throat, but there's a Bible scripture in Peter. It says, seek peace and ensue it, meaning find peace and follow it with all men. I'm serious. It's what we should, we should strive to do is find peace with everybody and not be prepared for the fight. And that goes for drivers and companies. I'm out of here. This is the podcast for the week. We love you guys. And uh, if you want to write in to, to wish Ruth Ann well, I know a lot of you guys will. We appreciate all the emails that we always get. And Miss Ruth Ann, Lord willing, we'll be back next week. Peace. Praise the Lord.